I want to take just a couple of minutes to talk about some quick, powerful ways to correct color in your images. These are techniques that are already known by a lot of Photoshop professionals, but I want to go over them with you guys. So what I've actually got here is sort of a split screen before and after. I'm just going to remove this layer and get rid of the work I've done. So this is actually a photograph that I took on vacation. I can't say I'm exactly proud of it. Um, but this happens a lot of times when you go out on vacation. You're using a regular camera, you take a photo, and when you get back you say, oh, you've got to check out this photo, and you pull it up on your computer and it just doesn't look the same as it did when you were there. The sky here is all gray and dingy looking. This was supposed to be bright and crisp and clean and look really cool. No such luck. So, we can take this into one of the most powerful color correcting spaces in Photoshop uh, to get started. What I'm going to do is go up under Image and Mode, and I'm going to change my mode from RGB color. That's almost certainly the, the color space you're already in. We're going to go to LAB color instead. This is a really neat color space. If I go over here to my channels and take a look, typically your images say RGB right here, and then we have red, green, and blue. Now, the problem with the, with the RGB color space is that both color and lightness in your image are sort of tied into one another. You're talking about red, green, and blue wavelengths of light being combined together to produce an image. So when you start to modify the lightness of an image, well, that's also affecting the colors, the reds, the greens, and the blues. And when you start to modify the colors, you're also affecting the light. Well, the LAB color space is really cool because it separates your image into lightness as one channel, and then contrast between reds and greens, and contrast between blues and yellows in a separate set of channels. So we've actually got contrast on one channel, and our color on two other separate channels. We can work with them individually. This becomes really powerful when we start to work with the curves dialog. So, that's exactly what we're going to do to restore this photo. Check this out. I'm going to pull up a new adjustment layer, and I'm going to apply curves. The first thing I'm going to try to deal with here is the sky. So I'm just going to go up here around my midpoint, and I'm going to just start dragging up a little bit, and maybe I'll come back over towards the highlights, and we'll go back and forth here and just kind of see what we like. Maybe I'll pull a few shadows in. Right now, I'm just paying attention to the clouds and to the sky, and I just want to make sure that I get a nice, bright sky with a little bit of definition. So this is a much brighter sky, much less dingy than it was before. And you'll also notice now that, that it's virtually ruined my foreground. My trees, the people, all this sort of stuff, totally black, totally gone. That's okay. The next thing I want to do is start to work with some of the color. This is where we go to our A and B channels. Instead of working with RGB, again, we're working with A and B for our colors. So I'm going to take the contrast between A and B, and I'm just going to modify it a little bit. Again, this is a technique that's well known to most uh, pro travel photographers, but I'm going to take uh, the, the extreme ends of my red-green contrast and just pull them even closer together. That's going to drive the color contrast apart a whole lot more. If you've worked with the Curves dialog box before, you know that moving points closer to the center and making a steeper curve always increases contrast. But since we're just working on a color channel, only color contrast is increased. And then we'll go down to our uh, B channel, and I'll do the same kind of a thing. As I pull over here, you'll see all of a sudden the blue's coming in very, very strongly, and then I need to balance that out coming the other way. And I'm actually not going to go too far the other way. See, if I were to balance this out with a steep uh, color contrast here, I'd actually bring a, a lot of yellow into my clouds, and I'm actually going to change my white balance as I do this, so I'm just going to slide this back over, and we can do this to taste, so that I get my, my clouds and my sky looking nice and crisp and bright and blue, and everything looks wonderful, except for my foreground. This, this still looks terrible. But before I go any further, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to take a look at my channels once again, because I'm going to need to use one of these later. Let's look at our channels. I've got my lightness, and I've got my A and my B. The lightness channel, if I just go ahead and turn off the other ones, the lightness channel has some really neat contrast here, and I'm actually going to use this later for a layer mask. This is going to become really cool. So I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the foreground is almost completely plugged, blacked out in shadow, and I'm going to save that for later. So I'm going to go to my lightness channel, right-click, and I'll duplicate. And we'll call it lightness copy. That's great. Now, I'm done with that for now, I'll go back to LAB, all three together, and I can see my full color image, and I'm going to turn that off for the moment. Now we'll go back and we'll add another curves adjustment, and this time we're just going to focus on the foreground. So I'll go down here in my lightness, and I'll go into my shadows, and I'll really bring those shadows up quite a bit. And you see as I'm doing this that I'm really destroying the sky in the process, but all that foreground is starting to come back. And once again, I can go in there if I feel like the colors need to be more vibrant, I can just come in and drag the ends in. And we'll just increase our color contrast quite a bit in here. So, once again, just bring that up like this.
is. And you can really see how vibrant that's becoming. If I toggle that on and off, you can just see how much more that photo pops. But once again, I've completely ruined the sky. My foreground now looks bright and, and vibrant. So now I've got these two adjustment layers, and they both do different things. I've got one that does a great job on the sky, one that does a great job on the foreground. Now I just need to mask them. Again, my adjustment layers have masks already attached to them. I just need to kind of work these things together somehow. So first, we'll go to my, uh, my bottom adjustment layer here. This is the one that affects the sky. I need to mask out the effect that it had on everything else. Well, fortunately, I have a channel for this. If I go ahead with my adjustment layer selected, I go over, over to Channels. Remember, we have this Lightness Copy already stored away. And in Lightness Copy, look, there's black on all the foreground stuff. So I'm just going to do Select All, and then I'm going to go Edit Copy, and then I'll move up onto my Curves Mask. So I can turn everything else off, just work with my Curves Mask, and Paste. So now I'm using that lightness. This is really cool. I'm using the lightness to mask away all of the rest of, of the parts of my image that I didn't want to affect. Here's a little before and after. If I turn off the mask, and turn the mask back on. You can see what's going on here in the foreground. There's off, there's on. It's, it's kind of subtle, but it is definitely doing it. A lot of the sort of color and stuff comes back here when I'm not applying that mask. I can refine this even further. If you just sort of take a look at the mask, you'll notice the sky is kind of gray and everything, so I can just go in and tweak this a little bit more by applying an adjustment. I can do a levels adjustment, so I can make the whites a little bit brighter, something like this, make the darks a little bit darker, and then if we look at our layer mask, all I've done here is I've taken the gray out of the sky. Okay, so now I've got a nice clear punch through to see all of my sky on the curves adjustment that's supposed to affect the sky. Well, now I need to work on my other adjustment, so I'll go ahead and turn the, the second adjustment on, and this one, remember, is still affecting the entire image, so it's making it's making my original foreground nice and bright, but it's also blowing out the sky, so I actually need to do the opposite of what this first layer mask did. I need to hide all the areas that this one shows. So all I do is I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard. That's also the Option key if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to click and drag the mask up. If I click and drag while holding that Alt or Option key and let go, it will replace the layer mask with a copy of the layer mask from Curves 1. So now both of these layers have the same layer mask on them. But I actually want the opposite in this one. So I'm just going to go Image, Adjustments, Invert, and almost like magic. Now I've got the opposite layer mask, so only where the adjustment affects the trees in the foreground is being shown on the second layer, and only where the sky is having an effect is being shown on the first layer. Before, after.